Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Kyle with another tutorial, and in this tutorial we'll be going over how to design and create this fluffy foxtail that you see here. Size of the tail will be around medium to long size, and stay till the end of the video so you can find out how you can win this foxtail. And uh, yeah, well, so let's get started. Here we go. Alright, so starting off with designing this foxtail. Hi, it's me. You're going to need a work area, a nice, uh, pretty good surface work area to lay your um, materials and everything down. So uh, go ahead and get an area like a, um, a flat surface, could be on the floor, even a carpet, um, tabletop like you see here is great. Uh, so go ahead and clear off your work area. Make sure you got lots of space for this because we're making a pretty good sized tail here. And once you get your area cleaned off and ready to go, which is awesome, we're going to need your supplies. So your first things you're going to need in your supply are Sharpie markers. Definitely going to grab some of those. You can even get um, the silver markers. Those are great for dark fabrics. A retractable knife with blades you can snap off. And you're going to need construction paper. I, get, I got this from Lowe's. You can get that from Lowe's or Home Depot. Usually sold in a larger roll. Great for designing, great for patterns. Um, you're going to need your uh, clippies. I call these... Um, um, what the heck? I can't think of what they're called. Um, your, um... Well, we'll come back to what those are called. I think they're called, um, clips. Oh, wonder clips. Wonder clips. Um, wonderful stuff. And, uh, your fur. You're gonna need some fur. You're gonna need, um... This is the faux fur. This is not fun fur. This is luxury shag, which is a lot better quality. I will go over that in a little bit further with you. You're also going to need things, uh, like a ruler and a compass. Uh, this is gonna be... A vital and we'll go over that also a little later in the video and polyfill you don't need this for stuffing your tail um, don't um, cut out for the good quality polyfill it's definitely important uh, you're still going to need matching thread colors and polypropylene belt strapping which should be used for the base of your tail to connect it and you're going to need a needle for some hand sewing also don't forget these these are great to use if you don't have wonder clips for Holding your fabric in place. Just use uh, good old fashioned uh, straight pins, sewing pins, work great. And a slicker brush. You're going to need a slicker brush ultimately to brush out your seams and to uh, condition the fur once it's finished. And of course, last but not least, a sewing machine. All right, if you've got all those things, we are ready to begin. Um, <clears throat> starting off, I'm tracing out the design with a, um, a pencil, graphite pencil, pencil. If you don't have that, you can use a pen. Um, going over that with a Sharpie and cutting out my shape and design. Um, as you can see, some of my design was uh, a little curled up. I used a, um, a roller to roll it back into place. And uh, here, as you can see, I am drawing in the two different areas of fur color that I'll be having here, which I will be using a caramel, uh, camel actually, it's called the camel, uh, for the upper section, the part that's going to be resting against the lower back. And then for the very tip, it's going to be the White Luxury Shag, which is, uh, I think, a pretty nice combo, pretty nice mix. And I'm going to be marking that there, as you can see. I'm marking the upper portion there with the name uh, Camel and drawing the lines of direction of the fur flowing, because you want the fur to flow naturally with the tail. So I'm going to point it in that direction, and I will show you up close here what that looks like. Um, I'm also marking the direction and the names for the uh, white fur, which would be the tip of the tail. And uh, you used to see how I'm doing with the motion. That is showing the direction of how the fur will be flowing, which is, is important. Uh, you want to get as close to the natural flow as you can. Um, the more pieces that you end up cutting for a tail, you end up make, creating more, more lines to show the flow of the fur. But for larger pieces like this, as long as you have the general direction going, it's going to work fine. It's going to work really well. And you can see here um, where I was doing the demonstration of that line where I'm cutting. Those are the crosshatch lines that I wanted to uh, point out. Those are drawn to show where your pattern is going to be meeting up, where it's going to be um, a stop and meeting up together. So that way when you create your sewn product, your pieces can match up exactly with those lines on your pattern. And what you're going to do for those is you're actually going to repeat those same lines on the opposite side. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take, excuse me, what you're going to do to, in order to accomplish this is take your Sharpie and 
you're going to trace on the opposite side and match that up, literally just mirroring that design on the opposite side. And I will show you a close up here of what that looks like. Um, so as I get that trace in there. But see there, see now you have the designs not just on the one side there, but you'll be flipping it and doing it on the other side. I found a great way to accomplish this is to, uh, is to either hold up your pattern to a bright light. It allows you to see through the other side and then you can trace and easily get it that way. Or you can just um, look at the very edge of the paper and then match the edge and then drag your Sharpie from the edge downward on the opposite side. That's one way you can also do it as well. And um, as you can see here, these hatch lines that I'm doing, these cross hatch lines are going to go all the way around the tail, except at the very base, except at the base of the tail where it connects. And that of course is uh, just, to, just to help your tail from becoming crooked or it helps to keep it nice and even so it don't get any kinks or anything like that. And uh, so yeah, there is that. And um, we will be speeding along here in just a bit to the next part. But do not skip on this part. Please do not skip on this part. It's most important. It's going to save you a headache later down the line in case you have to reposition something. You know, you, as long as you have a good a good starting pattern, you're going to have a good product in the end. And um, about every like every three inches or so, it's good to uh, put a cross hatch line. And so uh, the cross hatch lines are done, and you can see uh, how it you know matches up. And there's the the lines. Um, those markings that you saw me put on there before, you want to place this on the other side as well, showing that the line of fur direction is going the right way, so that way when, when you lay your pattern down, your fur comes out pointing the right way and not sticking up in some uh, weird orientation. So there is that, and go ahead and draw your lines again. And the same as before, this is the, the camel, and a great way to match these up is also um, you can peel your paper back like you see me doing there and then I'm just laying it straight like lining up that line straight away from me and then just pulling that marker in that same direction just whoosh, just like that just like that and it really does help with uh, keeping that line consistent <clears throat> Excuse me. and then of course if you want to make sure that it is nice and straight you can hold that piece of paper um, edge, edge against, like between your eyes and flip it quickly side to side and that'll show you if your line has, of course, um, properly lined up. It's kind of like, a, kind of like looking down the, uh, the, the length of a cue stick if you're playing pool, if you've ever done that before. It helps you see if your pool stick is straight. It's kind of, it's kind of like that. <clears throat> and also, most importantly of, of all, you want to mark which side is which. As you can see here, I'm marking the right-hand side. The right-hand side is going to go on the backing of your fur. So when it's flipped and cut out, your right-hand side is, of course, going to be the outside of your fur. As you can see here, I'll, I'll demonstrate. So there's two white pieces. I have the mark. That's your right-hand piece. And that'll be facing with the, um, the backing facing inward and your left-hand side. And same with the, um, with the camel, as you can see here. Go ahead and draw that out. Make sure your hatch lines are placed there as well. Make sure you add your hatch lines directly from your pattern by slightly drawing over the edge so it marks onto the fur. Yep, just like you saw, just like you saw me do there. And mark it. That's going to be your right hand piece, and of course this next one is your left hand piece. And yeah, this is of course important. So definitely don't want to skip on marking your pieces because if you do, it could end up being quite wonky. But there, as you can see, the pieces do match up according to their uh, oriented pieces, the left against the left and the right against the right. And this is the part that um, I'm, I'm, is definitely important. Pinning, you must pin your pieces if you want to get a um, wrinkle-free piece. And of course, you see there I'm using a matching thread. You want to use a similar color, if not matching thread for this piece. So, you're, um, so your, th um, your seams don't show through your fur. You don't want your thread to be showing through. It looks kind of a little awkward and doesn't look as nice. And um, <clears throat> if you have enough clips or pins, you can pin the whole way around, which is actually kind of a good way to uh, get this done more quickly, is just pin the whole thing around, use as many clips or pins as you have. Um, pin just as far in as you need. 
um, you can pin you can pin all the way up to your seam line that's fine even a little over just don't go too far into your seam or your edge will um, start to slide around and you won't get a crisp even edge and that's important that you get a crisp even edge it's going to keep your tail straight it's going to keep the design um, true and uh, it's just going to look a lot nicer and uh, when sewing luxury shag it's important that you tuck the fur into the seams you always want to make sure that fur is tucked in there you can use your uh, your finger I like to just use my pinky and just slide the fur in there or even um, a straight pen or a needle just make sure the fur is in your seam because if not you're going to get fur stuck in the seams and it's going to be a lot more a lot more for you to brush out later and it could create a, a seam that's not very strong uh, so this this part here once you get your tail sewn up like that you want to create your cap this is how you do it this is how you do it you take your original pattern you take a ruler and you want to measure um, the length. You want to measure the um, the full length of the pattern of the tail cap base where it, where it rests against your backside. And there you can see there it looks like it's around uh, eight and eight one eighths. It looks like it came up to. <clears throat> okay, so you want to take your calculation, and this part here is how you're going to get your actual tail cap diameter. You want to create pi. You want to use the pi of the 3.14 and multiply that, or um, divide that rather by the, um, you want to divide your 8.14, which I came up with, by the 3.14, and that's going to create your, um, your diameter. Uh, this is going to create so 2.5. So go ahead and bring that to 2.5. So when you have that, you want to multiply that by two. And what that's going to do, it's going to create, it's going to create the full uh, size, the circumference that you need for the piece. So once you have that, you of course want to multiply that by two, and that's going to give you the full circumference that you need. And um, you want to take your compass and go ahead and spin it, just like you see here. You want to spin the paper. Uh, make sure you're using. Um, using a pencil of course because you don't want to ink this just yet and then you want to measure this you want to actually um, measure this make sure this is accurate I did measure that so it, it did end up being um, the correct measurement of the of the um, the five inches and so it did turn up being correct and uh, once you have that uh, checked out to make sure that it is correct that way you can go ahead and start uh, creating your um, your cap you go ahead and cut out your your pattern in the cardboard paper. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get that cut out. And when this is said and done, um, like I said, originally your your piece originally should equal that of what you're calculated. And you can even fold it to make sure that it's nice and even. And it looks great, looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece and place it to the uh, back in here. You can use fleece. Uh, this back in here is called um, quilted broadcloth, I believe it's called. And um, you want to take your polypropylene. And for this part here, this part here, you want to make sure you just heat your ends. After you cut them, it keeps them from unraveling. Um, as you can see here, this helps sear the ends. It keeps them from unraveling. It's, it just melts the plastic slightly. <clears throat> uh, typically for a, a size for a tail, I use uh, four inches of polypropylene. And fold them over. Uh, um, I think I fold them over half inch. I think it's right around half an inch or so. I fold them over, as you can see there, because I'm using a belt. I'm using a belt that's like an inch and a quarter inch and a half thick, and I will show you what that looks like. Um, what that entails is it, it gives me room for the tail for the belt to slide into the belt loops, and that's important. As you can see, that's what it will look like. And you just sew on the edges right where the belt would go into it, and that will keep it nice and secure, and also keep the raw edges away from rubbing against the belt and sticking out. That's gonna it's gonna make your piece look a lot nicer, a lot more professional. Now the part that you see here, the the nice side, the side that does not have the marker drawn on it, is gonna be the side that you're sewing on. I find a great way to measure these up is actually lining up your design with the diamonds on the fabric. Works out really great. Um, leave around the space enough for uh, one of the belt loops on your pants or jeans uh, for that to slip through so it can fit between those polypropylene pieces. <clears throat> and uh, 
apparently uh, there is a clip here of where I was sewing the polypropylene again, so uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that, you can go ahead and uh, see how I did that. And here is where I'm uh, attaching it to the backing, to the actual cap, which will be uh, going to the base of your tail. Make sure that this is nice and secure, make sure it's true to, the, to that seam line where you um, tack those down originally. Um, you don't want to go too far in because it can make it too tight for your belt loop and then you'll have to use a smaller belt or just make the belt loops larger. So this part you see here, this part here is where we're attaching the cap. We're almost done this tail. Yay, we're almost done. Um, pin it, make sure that you get your orientation. Get those diamonds that are on the fabric. They work really great in help positioning that. Point them straight up. Get them lined up with your seams and um, pin and sew. Pin and sew that design. Once that is done, you can turn it inside out and um, start stuffing it. As you saw there earlier in the video, I left an opening at the bottom. You don't want to sew the entire thing closed. You want to make sure that opening is left, left open so you can um, put stuffing in it. So that's important that you can get your stuffing in there and of course turn your tail inside out uh, so you can put the stuffing in. This part you see me doing here, this is completely optional. It's not, it's not necessary by any means. I just like to do it to give my tail a little extra lift. Um, sticking some foam in there. You saw me um, gluing some foam together. I just stuck that in there, it helps. Um, once the tail is stuffed, use a matching thread. Um, thread, if you don't have a matching thread, something similar will work. And um, like I said, um, stuff your tail, make sure it's like a um, firmness of a pillow, and then you go ahead and start stitching it closed. Um, you stitch it closed with a um, whip stitch, or you can use a, um, a ladder stitch or a Henson stitch. It's pretty nice. And there it is. There it is, folks. That is the finished tail, and it is, feels wonderful. It's fluffy. And um, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I goodness, it was fantastic. Bouncy, fluffy foxtail, and it, it wiggles. It looks great. And um, so, yeah, there is the finished product. Um, and folks, that is it. That is how you make the tutorial for a foxtail like this. I hope the tutorial was informative and easy to understand so everyone can make their, make their own foxtails for either a Halloween costume party or just a cosplaying in general. So remember in the early part of the video, I said to stay tuned to the end so you can find out how you could win this fluffy foxtail. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I would like to give a big shout out to a Patreon supporter of mine, Lunatic for Life. They have a channel on YouTube fantastic independent YouTuber artist. Thank you so very much for your support. Give give their channel a check out. They need your love. They're fantastic people. Give them a check out. So how do you win this big fluffy foxtail? It's very easy. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber. Little button right down there. Click it right now. It'll subscribe you. Then in the comment box below, say, please enter me in the drawing. And then give the video a like. That's all there is to it. Give it a go, it's fantastic, and you will be put into the drawing to win this fluffy box tail. The raffle will be held from now till December 12th, and the winner will be announced the following day, and the lucky winner will have their item shipped to them in time for Christmas. So that's all there is to enter the contest, folks. Also, don't forget to like and share this video, and over here, check out these videos right now if you'd like to learn how to make other cool things like these fox ears you see right here. Give them a check out. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Check it out. Check out this video too. That one's great. Check out this one.